Today on the Comic Story, and we're going to be resolving Fear State. With Scarecrow defeated, how did everyone else in the Bat family manage to get to the finale of their storylines? This is the Comic Story and Channel, where I take trade paperbacks and single issues and I break them down into digestible bites, turning them into a synopsis, cutting out a lot of the fluff and additional plot so that you have an understanding as to what happens in the world of comics, but are able to go to your local comic book store, buying these issues for more context and amazing art, or getting the next issues knowing what the heck is even going on. All alterations to the panel section images are to prevent copyright problems, and all art is owned by by respective companies. So last week we ramped up the Batman side of the Fear State story, which basically the concept of Scarecrow took over the city using his fear toxins to create a fear state. While this was going on, the Magistrate created a militaristic nation inside of Gotham and was trying to prove that they are the future, a militaristic government to control Gotham City. Last week, we saw how Batman kind of resolved the plot, but now we're gonna give you the answers to what happened to Catwoman as she was attempting to defend Alleytown from the approaching Magistrate forces and the evil villains that she was supposedly working with. We're then going to tell you what happened to Batgirl and Nightwing when they kissed last issue and what's going on next. Then we're going to tell you the conclusion to the Batman detective storyline in which he was saving Marinacano and proving to Marinacano why Magistrate needs to get pulled out of Gotham City. Then we're going to give you the epilogue. I'll give you a little bit more context in front of each of these issues just because they're all their own separate stories related to Fear State. But let's go ahead and kick off with Catwoman 37. While the fighting inside of the terminal continues, Harley Quinn is knocked down and Catwoman says that they need to just last a little longer. Once the transport is at the docks, they'll be clear. Harley rubs her head stating that that's great and all, but Gardner beat up the flickering lady and now there's two of them and they have different powers. That's not how knocking someone out is supposed to work. Gardner then tells her that Catwoman is right. The best that they can hope for is to hold them off. While Catwoman and the others hold the line out on the streets, the Riddler directs the convoy to the docks, while the Magistrate spreads its forces trying to figure out which van is the real one transporting Ivy's innocence. Billy asks if he's sure about this, and Riddler tells him to trust him. There are some cool customers that they've got waiting for them. As the van breaks down the fences to the docks, Penguin's men open fire on the Magistrate drones, giving Billy and the others a chance to escape. But something seems off about Penguin's welcome. Back at the terminal, Catwoman and the others have a moment to breathe, taking out more of the witches when Riddler radios in, stating that he has a riddle for her. What is greatly appreciated by the server, never enjoyed by the served, and always best when chilled? Give up? Revenge! Everything that she has built, this alley town that she made herself queen of, all those that she saved and all those chains that she broke, she built that off of what she stole from him and the penguin. And right now, they're taking it back. They'll have the only piece of evidence that will ruin Simon's saint. So they'll have the leverage. And once the magistrate removes all of the vermin here, he and the penguin will control alley town and all of its secrets. So how does it feel to watch everything that you've built up slip away like sand in your fingers, Catwoman? As she listens, another call comes in stating that everyone is safe, and she smiles. She looks up at one of Riddler's cameras, telling him that she suspected that he was the one who leaked Ivy's whereabouts to the Magistrate, and she knew that he'd go after her. In fact, she counted on his betrayal. That's why she sent Clayface to Ivy's place and a few more party crashers. So while the Magistrate came to the docks to pick up Penguin after her crew gets out, that'll make Grove Street safe for a bit. Because they never moved Ivy. Harley and Gardner got her out of here safely. So that only leaves her behind. And he's wrong. None of what she has built has slipped through her fingers. And if it means that she has to give herself up to protect it, that's a choice that she will make again and again. But outside, Shoes says, Not just yet, Cat. And after calling in some reinforcements, they see a white car bursting through the terminal. And as it comes up to a fashionable stop, Ghostmaker gets out. Together with Ghostmaker, Catwoman fights back the droves of witches, telling herself that she won't be afraid anymore, that she won't run away. She won't be afraid to care or afraid to lose. She is unafraid. She came to Alleytown looking to prove to everyone else who Catwoman really is, and maybe she was just trying to find out herself. But she doesn't have fear for this town. It'll be fine. Its people and heroes are more resilient than they've been given credit for. So often, she stand here on the cold rooftops wondering if she might get a shadow to chase her just so that she can stop feeling alone. But she isn't even afraid of that anymore. 
because there's always people there. And there you have it, the resolution to Catwoman defending Alleytown during Fear State. Harley Quinn did run off and bring the innocence of Ivy back to Queen Ivy, as we discovered in last week's episode of Batman. But now it's time to go to Nightwing issue 86, so we can discover how he and Batgirl got out of their situation and ended up going over to stop the enemies. Nightwing, Barbara, and Tim all stand in disbelief as they watch the clock tower explode with their friends Spoiler and Orphan inside. The three run to the rubble and begin to pull back the rocks, hoping, praying to find their friends alive. Their muscles aching, their fingers bleeding, not stopping until they get a call on the comms from a familiar voice. And Barbara grabs the radio, yelling, if they can see, can you move? Across town, Spoiler tells her, yes, I can move. And Cass is with me. Is, uh, everything okay? A few moments later, everyone meets up and Spoiler says that this is an unusual amount of hugging. What is going on? Orphan says that they thought the Magistrate killed them, and Nightwing says they did, but it wasn't the Magistrate who attacked. Barbara points up at Skybase 01 telling them that the Magistrate pulled the triggers, but someone else told them to fire. A woman called Seer. She's hacked into the Oracle systems and she is up there. Tim asks how they're getting up there, unless the two lovers want to be alone. Spoiler asks, wait, why would they want to be alone? So Tim informs her that they kissed. She smiles. Finally! Barbara stops everyone. Can we not do this right now, please? Orphan whispers over. Good kissing? And Barbara smiles, whispering back, yes, it was good. Now let's focus up. We can reprogram the drones to fly up there. And Tim says that if they do that, the magistrate would notice. Magistrate then asks, well, what if we were magistrate soldiers then? We have flight packs. All we need to do is knock out some of the patrolmen. A few moments later, one of the Magistrate soldiers is hit with a can, and they turn around to see Tim and Spoiler and give chase. Tim and Spoiler lead them down a dark alley where Nightwing, Barbara, and Orphan spring into action, knocking everyone out. Everyone begins to equip the armor, and Spoiler begins to fly out, stating, Okay, I just want to set the record straight. We need more plans that include jetpacks. Once outfitted, the five fly up to Skybase 01, but Seer stops them as they board, telling them, I knew you were coming and I made sure that they knew as well. Nightwing yells to remove the helmets so they know who not to fight and engage the oncoming wave of soldiers. Seer watches, stating that it looks like they're really bogged down. Guess it's time to bring this all to an end. Spoiler asks, what is she talking about? And a second later, the sirens begin to blare. Nightwing realizes she's bringing down the airship. And Seer tells him, I am. And someone better do something about all those kids it's gonna crash into in the city. Nightwing asks her, what kids? She tells them that a bunch of the kids of Gothamites just paid Simon Saint to bring their kids up here, thinking it'd be safer up here than on the ground. Poor decision in hindsight. Everyone follows the screams to a room where two soldiers are keeping watch over the children. One soldier is asking, what is happening? And Nightwing tells them that their ship is going down and we'd prefer violence in front of the children. Orphan cracks their knuckles, telling them, don't fight, just run. The soldiers wrap their weapons and begin to sprint out of the room. And once clear, the children ask Barbara if she knows Wonder Woman. And Barbara tells her, I work with her all the time. Another asks Nightwing if he knows Superman. And Nightwing tells him, I'm actually pretty good friends with him. Barbara tells everyone that these are Batgirls and Robin, and they're going to try and help them get off the ship. So Tim asks, what are they going to do? And Nightwing says, we're going for the command center. As the two get over there, they find Simon Saint already trying to control the situation, but he and his guards turn their guns, with Nightwing knocking them out and Barbara stating that she isn't here. She pulls out a jump drive stating that Seer was here, and Saint didn't even know it. She could find her, but that might not even be an option. So Nightwing asks if she would settle for hacking into the headquarters of the oppressive force that is terrorizing her city and her friends and bringing it down from within. Barbara laughs, (laughs) I suppose I could do that. Saint yells that they won't be doing, but Barbara knocks him out, grabbing the intercom, telling everyone that she is taking control of the airbase. But she will not stop its fall. She instead will direct it to Gotham Harbor. You have three minutes to evacuate. As everyone begins to escape from the ship, Barbara asks if he would like to do the honors, so Nightwing presses the button, stating that he'd love to. And as Skybase 01 crashes into the water, Nightwing and Barbara watch as it sinks. And Nightwing says, you usually look a bit more happier after taking out the bad guy. She holds up the jump drive stating that Seer played them and hacked Oracle and got away. She knows too much. She threatens everything. And Seer could be anyone. 
As she looks at the drive, she notices a strange marking on it, though. Meanwhile, elsewhere, the one girl who asked Nightwing if he knew Superman walks down an alleyway, pulling down the hood of her jacket. And on the back is the same marking as the jump drive. Well, now we know how Nightwing, Batgirl, and the rest of them got into the actual ship to stop Simon Saint on behalf of Batman back in her last Batman issue. And we also have a new villain out in the works, a young girl who's apparently capable of hacking into Barbara Gordon's network. But it's time to go finish up the storyline with Batman and Marinacano that was apparently happening between all of this, so this one isn't going to line up at all. Here we go, the finale to Batman Saving the Mare. When we last left off with the mayor and Batman, they were down in the sewers dealing with parasites, and Batman had to tase the water frying the creatures, only to find that he knocked out Mayor Nakano, and he was beginning CPR, telling him to wake up. After several minutes of beating on Nakano's chest, Nakano gasps for air, screaming to get them off. But Batman tells him, It's okay. The shock took care of the parasites. He shines a light into Nakano's eye and studies it for a moment, telling him, Good. No abnormal reaction to light. Nakano asks what is that supposed to mean, and Batman tells him that means that he's not infected. Now they need to get out of here. The two begin to head back outside, with the radio starting up again and Oracle asking if Batman can hear her. Batman tells her that he has the mayor and they're heading back towards 4th Street. The tunnels are infested and he believes that it's the parasite in a larval form. And if it is, they have a big problem. He just killed a swarm that attacked Nakano with an electrical shock. But that wasn't the last of them. The signal begins to cut out again, and Oracle puts out a call to the rest of the Bat family to meet up with Batman as he leaves the sewers. There's more happening on the surface that no one is seeing yet. With all of the clusters hatching, the parasites are now making their way onto the streets through the sewer drains, already attacking everyone. Back down below, Batman and Decano run into their first parasitic infestation. A giant wall of red growth stemming from the larva. Batman latches back onto the ceiling just as he did before and gives the water a shock to tear it down. But this just proves his greatest fear. The infestation is spreading faster than they thought. Nakano stops Batman, shouting to tell him everything that he knows. What is happening to my city? There hasn't been a report of infections for weeks. Batman tells him, just because they weren't reported doesn't mean they're not happening. It's possible that this mutated in whatever sludge city sanitation hasn't been cleaned out of these sewers in years. The former administrator, Hugh Vile, was a John Doe in the county morgue until he was cremated yesterday. And if you doubt that, you could speak to Deb Donovan. Vile tried luring her to his office to infect her. Nakata argues that if there is information, then it needs to be shared with his office. His door has always been open to Batman. Sure, but the magistrate hasn't exactly made it easy. Plus, it would seem that the magistrate has their own agenda, Nakano. While you told everyone about the vigilante menace, people believed that the ones in masks are the true enemy, allowing the city to become infested with a deadly hazard that you didn't see and didn't put any resources into fighting. The creature at the heart of this worked in your office. He is a man who believes that he can tell who's a monster and who's not. Gotham has become a city full of monsters that you couldn't see. Soon, Batman climbs onto the street, helping Nakano out, and as he looks out onto the street, he hears someone screaming and a crowd of people running. Batman takes off in that direction as Nakano tries to follow and see what Batman saw, and within seconds, he does. Batman is already entangled by a growth trying to eat him, and as he tries to pull out his taser, his arm is squeezed, causing him to drop it. Batman yells for Nakano to run, but Nakano grabs the taser, shocking the growth. Just then, a helicopter appears overhead, and a voice over a radio says that they got a bio-read. The electroshock is doing damage, but still needs a little bit of juice, powering it up. The helicopter fires the beam straight into the growth, freeing Batman, and a voice says that they are firing again. Batman grabs the mare, pulling him out of the way as Nightwing mans the helicopter, telling him, All right, now you can really zap the bug squid. This time, a more powerful charge is fired directly into the heart of the growth, burning it to ash before it has a chance to attack again. And with that, Batman stopped the infestation that everyone ignored because of the magistrate situation. The next day, Nakano looks out his office window as his aide tells him that they have a meeting with the magistrate later. They have taken over security of the building for now. The reports on the incidents of yesterday are ready to present. Nero, XIX, and the Parasites. Two things that the magistrate should have handled. Nakano tells her that he has information as well that he wants the office to look into. They're currently coordinating with someone now. And he wants to see Deb Donovan. Tell her that he wants to talk about the city's infrastructure. And that he'll give her an exclusive interview for her trouble. 
In the meantime, they're going to start making a list. A better list. The aide asks a list of what? Nakano stares out his window, telling her, The monsters of our city. And that concludes the storyline of why the mayor no longer trusts the magistrate. Now, in my honest opinion, I kind of feel like the whole ship crashing and the Nero situation and Peacekeeper 01, if you've been following the storyline, all of that is kind of related to the mayor not trusting the magistrate anymore. But I do like that Detective Comics gave us a more direct reason why the mayor no longer trusts the magistrate. Now it's time to go into Batman, Fear State Omega, the actual conclusion to everything, the epilogue to our story. Let's hit it. As the rain pours over the GCPD, Montoya says that she didn't like keeping him here for the last month, but also doesn't like where he's going. Mayor Nakano says that he's sorry about all of this, but Montoya tells him that this isn't the place or the time for that. A few moments later, Crane is wheeled out in restraints, stating that it's a pity. They all still have to live in this sad, broken world, because you all stood in the way of what it could become. Montoya tells the officers to gag him and then tells them to get him the hell out of here. Just don't listen to a damn word that he says. He's loaded up into the police transport and the two officers drive off with one stating that it's kind of creepy driving one of the big bats. There's so much fear in this city thanks to him. Crane sits up. No, the fear has always been there. I was just doing something productive with it. I'll do a better job next time. The driver asks, what does he mean next time? But before he could get a response, he slams on the brakes before hitting a giant scarecrow. Crane tells him, I'm smarter than the average costumed lunatic you're used to in this city. Did you really think I wouldn't have a plan for this kind of a setback? Several masked men begin to surround the transport, and then there's the sounds of thuds and snaps that can be heard from outside. Crane tells them, I made sure that Batman didn't get a head start on what's to come. He thinks the attack on the city is over. But then Batman opens the door. It is. He grabs Crane, throwing him out, telling him, The current restraints will knock you out if you try anything. You'll wake up at your destination, and we won't have to ever see each other again. Crane tells him, Okay, okay. I'll play nice. But quid pro quo. It feels strange to be talking to you naked, so to speak. Batman groans as he reaches over to one of the knocked out thugs, grabbing a mask and throwing it on Crane. And Scarecrow clears his throat. Ah ha ha! Yes! That's much better! Thank you! After being set in the Batmobile, Scarecrow asks, How is his old friend Simon Saint doing these days? And Batman tells him, Not particularly well, actually. Miracle Molly testified in detail how Saint encouraged the Unsanity Collective's attack on the media to manipulate the public and create a demand for the magistrate. In exchange for her testimony, the DA dropped charges on three other leaders of the Unsanity Collective, provided that she does time for their robberies. She's in Blackgate now, no doubt recruiting the next generation of the Collective for when she's free again. The rest of the Collective has fallen off the grid. Even I haven't been able to pinpoint where they've set up inside of the city. It's because... You're not looking for them. Batman goes on. I don't see them as a threat to the city. Just people looking for a second chance. Workers are out trying to recover the Magistrate's sky base from Gotham River. What about the rumor of another Batman running around? I heard he's causing all sorts of chaos. I'll deal with that in time. As for Saint Industries, the board is auctioning off its tech to the highest bidder to use in the foreign wars. Simon gets to be their convenient scapegoat, but his company will live on. And among those sitting at the table for Saint's tech is Amanda Waller. It must make you furious. No, it means the people who funded Saint and pointed him in Gotham's direction are still out there. It means I still have work to do. That must go double for poor Mahoney. Heard about that one from his cell in the GCPD. Batman doesn't answer, but Scarecrow goes on. I heard the scientists couldn't keep him out. But then again, Sean isn't a normal character, is he? Batman finally responds, telling him, You should have been there when they tried to remove the tech from Sean's body. Maybe moved him into league custody. Someone made the decision to attempt it before that could happen. You'll find out in time. But Mahoney is gone. He's out of the city. That much I'm sure of. Scarecrow laughs. Oh, he'll be back. He's too dangerous not to come back. And he'll be carrying a grudge with him, Batman. It must be maddening knowing the entire city used to cheer your name. The police used to shine your light into the sky. Everyone's life gets worse and worse. 
and they now know the reason why. But Batman tells him, that isn't true. The children, the little Bat family, they must be horrified by the people that you're running around with these days. What you've resorted to. This ghost maker, Harley Quinn, the Unsanity Collective. These are dangerous, dangerous people. It must unsettle the family to see how your priorities have shifted. I've seen through some of my old ways. I have rules. In my city, my rules will be obeyed. But people can always change. They can always be better. <laughs> As a psychiatrist, I can assure you, people will never change. It doesn't bother me that you disagree. There's a whole generation rising up wary of authority in my symbol. They need heroes too. Even if those heroes don't look the way that I would choose them to. The Clown Hunter is an example of that. He may not listen to me, but he may listen to someone else. Someone that he can trust. I don't understand what the point of that is. I'm not afraid of the future of Gotham City. I've seen it change many, many times over the many years. I've seen it become many things. I've had to become so many things to fight back against it. I have failed an impossible number of times, and I've won an impossible number of times. Some of the other villains have built new lives on themselves and moved from villainy. Some of them have doubled down and changed their methods. But you, you have never changed. And now you tried the biggest attack that you ever dared on the city, and it failed. What more could you do? The same thing again, but bigger, Scarecrow? I may not know what tomorrow looks like, but it doesn't scare me. Not anymore. Batman is shaped by fear and trauma, and it has changed me many times. But Scarecrow has pushed himself to the limits of fear, and you have never changed, never evolved. Just look around. The city shrugged off the fear state like it shrugged off the Joker war before it. There are scares, but the city is moving forward. There was a time when I thought I could control Gotham, but I know now that Gotham cannot be controlled. It doesn't need me to evolve. It doesn't need the Scarecrow to evolve either. It's going to keep evolving with or without both of us. I'm excited to see what tomorrow is going to bring. I'm going to save everyone I can within my power, and that's all I'm going to do. And that doesn't scare me. And neither do you. Scarecrow is shocked. You're wrong! You're lying! This is some sort of mind game! Batman slows to a stop. You'll have to take that up with your new therapist. He gets out dragging Scarecrow to the doors of Arkham Tower. And Dr. Meridian says that she was worried when she got word that the transport got hijacked. Scarecrow scoffs. <laughs> Chase Meridian. Meridian says that she's looking forward to speaking with him in more detail. She's read all about his work. It's deranged, of course, but deeply fascinating. As the orderlies take Scarecrow, Dr. Meridian turns to Batman, stating that she hopes that her new hospital can be a light to him as well. Because this all began with Arkham's destruction, and now it ends with its replacement. Some things never change. Batman stops for a moment, looking over his shoulder. Maybe some should. And that concludes all of Fear State in its weird all-over-the-place reading order. I hope you guys enjoyed this ongoing series right here at Comic Storian. And this isn't the end, because this is what we like to do here. We like to grab all of the spin-off issues and bring them in for a true full story. We don't like to ignore the weird, annoying pieces. If it all is interesting to the overall story, we like to loop it in. Now, if you go look at the checklist, there's a lot more books related to Fear State, but some of them don't even mention the Fear State. I'm assuming that they were supposed to be happening during Fear State. Task Force Z, Harley Quinn made brief mentions and then ran off back in her own adventures. A few books like that exist. But what we did is we found the ones that actually pertained to the actual Fear State storyline and we brought it to you here. So stick around, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. We're covering the Devil's Reign event over at Marvel, and that's going to be the one that we cover all the spinoffs in very soon. So if you want to keep up to date on everything going on with the Daredevil Devil's Reign event, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Also check out our Friday Daredevil days, where we're doing an ongoing Daredevil series. And our next Batman series is going to be the entire coverage of Detective Comics and the animated series continuation starting up in March when a, a movie comes out that says Batman, and people are going to be looking for it. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for your continued support. I really do appreciate it. The fact that any of you stuck it out to the end of this Fear State coverage is awesome. I know this I know this series didn't get much coverage in the world of comic books in general, and most people don't even know it exists. But I wanted to give you all the parts to it because I thought it was fun. I like Scarecrow. I like Batman. I like all this stuff. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time right here.